the last two topics that we have under the cardiac pathology are cardiomyopathy and cardiac tumors. Now beginning with cardiomyopathy which is the more important one, these are the list of cardiomyopathies that we have to cover. Dilated, hypertrophic, then we have uh, something called restrictive, these are the main ones and the most important one is hypertrophic. We also have a minor one that is arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy which is important for exams like INICT. So we'll take up the ones that we have. Let's start uh, with dilated. So as the name suggests, everything is going to undergo dilation. So the first question asked to us is what undergoes dilation? Please remember all the four chambers of the heart are going to undergo dilation. That's the first and the most important thing. It is a dilation of all the four chambers. First question, is there only dilation involved? No, there is an element of hypertrophy also of the fibers. Now, that is what you need to watch out in the exam. See, just because they say hypertrophy of the cardiac fibers are there, doesn't mean that you guys start marking it as hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. What is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy? I'll explain in another five minutes. But dilation of cardi dilation of the heart, dilated cardiomyopathy, also has an element of hypertrophy that is involved with it. So obviously coming to our mind is why does it happen? It is associated with certain genetic causes and it is associated with other miscellaneous drugs and uh, you know lifestyle habits. So when we talk about genetic, one of the most common causes and also coming across as an autosomal dominant disorder is a mutation in the titan gene. I hope everyone remembers that when we talk about titan gene and titan protein, we've read this in biochemistry, that titan protein has the, is the largest protein. It has something like uh, 30,000 amino acids or so. Maximum amino acids are there. It's a titan protein, largest protein in the body. That mutation has an autosomal dominant inheritance that can certainly result in DCM. Next, we have an X-linked disorder. X-linked disorder that is dystrophin. We know what is the problems that happen with the dystrophin gene like dystrophy, muscle dystrophy, the Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, Becker's muscular dystrophy. So dystrophin gene causes all those dystrophies. It comes under X-linked recessive. And rarely there can also be mitochondrial inheritance problems. So if there is a mitochondrial inheritance defect, you know the kind of DCM that happens tends to be in children. There is childhood dilated cardiomyopathy that takes place. So please remember that there are three genetic causes. First one is titan which is the most common in autosomal dominant. Second is dystrophin which has X-linked recessive inheritance. Third is mitochondrial which results in childhood DCM. What about the other causes? I have tried to write it in an alphabetical order. Anthracycline drug. Alcohol I label because one of the most common causes of DCM is alcoholism. Let me tell you or let me highlight it. If someone asks you what is the most common cause, actually you know the most common cause is I don't know. The most common cause is idiopathic. If idiopathic is there in the options, nothing like it. But if idiopathic is not there in the options and you have to select from the most common cause, then the answer is going to be alcohol. So select. If idiopathic is there, more than half of the cases are idiopathic. If that is not there, then select alcohol. So anthracycline, alcohol, with C we have cobalt and catecholamines and cocaine. So drug abuse, cobalt and catecholamines. And lastly, peripartum. So yes, somewhere in the third trimester, somewhere in the third trimester and usually in the 30s, usually in 30-year-old females, somewhere in the third trimester with an elevated prolactin, this condition has been noted. So remember, third trimester, somewhere in the 30-35 year old female with elevated prolactin. So how have I learnt it? P for peripartum, P for prolactin, 3 and 3, 30 year, third trimester. 30 year, third trimester, prolactin high, peripartum female, she is at a risk of DCM, dilated cardiomyopathy. So genetics are done, drugs, alcohol, uh, drug abuse, peripartum, all of that is done. Lastly, how will it look like under the microscope? This is again one of the recent questions that have come up. Dilated cardiomyopathy tends to show you something known as the ninja star nucleus. Dilated cardiomyopathy tends to show you the ninja star nucleus. That's a ninja star and if you look at all the nuclei, 
they have that characteristic ninja star appearance we can zoom in for you to visualize look at this nuclei here this one here this one here the classical ninja star appearance is what you see so having said that will this obviously this is something that the pathologist will see and this is something that the pathologist will see if the patient has died otherwise for a dcm who goes in for a biopsy right that's not the investigation of choice so if a ninja star nucleus is seen it could mean what most likely and i'm not saying it's specific but most likely associated with titan mutation again this is not mandatory can you see ninja star in other regions of dcm you can but what i think more in favor of is titan mutation that is dilated cardiomyopathy now dilated has a little bit of a twist and a variant called tacot subo cardiomyopathy that i'm going to study tacot subo cardiomyopathy first and foremost this is also known as the broken heart cardiomyopathy this is known as the broken heart syndrome or the broken heart cardiomyopathy so firstly what is heartbreak obviously i hope no one has but ultimately everyone will heartbreak or a broken heart is obviously a very very stressful condition in life what they actually want to tell you is about emotional stress it is associated with a lot of emotional stress right so emotional stress in life could be a heartbreak obviously for students who give neat and other exams they know that heartbreak is no emotional stress in front of what a neat pg exam is but emotional stress does result in the release of a lot of catecholamines in the heart catecholamines in the body in general and catecholamines tend to then go and affect the left ventricle the left ventricle gets dilated so obviously if this is the heart you will ask me that catecholamines have increased because of stress so this means that the entire heart should be dilated why are we only dilating the left ventricle out here because maximum receptors for catecholamines are present in the left ventricle maximum receptors for catecholamines are present in the left ventricle hence we say that left ventricle is maximally affected so you understood why we called it broken heart syndrome because it is because of emotional stress and catecholamines the main reason catecholamines then why do we call it tacot subo cardiomyopathy you know what tacot subo is tacot subo is a japanese term and in japan whenever they want to catch an octopus they want to catch an octopus that is known as tacot subo octopus trap octopus trap is a tacot subo so you know it looks something like this the octopus trap looks something like this it's a round globular kind of a thing in that they catch the they've caught the octopus i'll show you another picture so look at this this is the normal heart in the normal heart all of you can see the normal left ventricle no problem in it but when there is a broken heart when there is tacot subo cardiomyopathy can you see what has happened to the heart the left ventricle it's become globular it's become rounded dilated globular just like an octopus catching trap just like a japanese tacot subo so because the left ventricle starts looking like the tacot subo we call it tacot subo cardiomyopathy so both terms make sense tacot subo is the appearance and broken heart is the reason that is increase in